Hi, Valerie here from A Stitch in Life. I'm gonna show you the basics of a sewing machine. Okay, so this is a basic sewing machine. Sorry, you'll probably hear my kids in the background. Um, this one is a Kenmore. And it says 12 stitch. It's a very basic machine, which is good. It does zigzag. It has a few different kinds of decorative stitches and then these look like overlock stitches. Um, you can do a three thread it looks like. Hmm. Actually I don't know what those two are. And then you could basically you can move the needle over to the other side here. Let me show you the light. There we go. And then a buttonhole, built-in buttonhole. So very basic. This machine I think is from the 80s. I got it secondhand from a guy who was buying sewing machines at the thrift store, fixing them up and then reselling them for like $35, $40 at the most. I found that Kenmore is definitely the better of the machines and the majority of what he had fixed. Um, I have several Kenmores, some that are older than this one. This one's from the 80s, like I said. It might be from the 90s. Um, but I have a couple from the 60s and early 70s that are all metal. These are metal inside. Um, this one is metal inside with the uh, plastic on the outside. These machines are workhorses and they will last forever. So if you do find Kenmore secondhand and it's not that much, I think it is worth buying it um, because they really do last and they're really great machines. And the reason that I have several machines too is because I taught sewing lessons for a long time. So this one, you can actually open this up and see inside, which is so exciting um, <laughs> to really see the mechanics of it. There's the light there. Um, it's over here on the side, see? Um, these bulbs you can easily change and it's good that you can open it yourself and not have to take it to get it taken apart to get the bulb changed. Um, you can see the lever right there, going the arm going up and down, which it's kind of like when you're hand sewing and you're just going like this and pulling the, the, the thread through. And then right between here, which you can't necessarily get to so easily, um, you have to take that screw off right there, looks like, some screws. <laughs> Um, to get to it, but you don't necessarily have to get to it for any reason, but that's the tension disc. So it's two round discs that are sandwiched together and the thread goes right between the two discs and it keeps the thread taut when this arm pulls it through. It's not all loosey goosey up here. It keeps the thread tight. So just like when you're sewing, you're not gonna sew it all blah, 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 and make it all loose. You're gonna have it tight as well. Um, and the numbers are telling you how tight or how loose the thread is going to be. And you adjust that according to the type of fabric that you're using. Like if it's a thicker fabric, then um, you might wanna have a looser um, tension and then if it's thinner fabric you probably want to have it tighter so it's something that you can just adjust and play with this this one in particular you can really you know crank it one way or another um, there's also a tension on the bobbin case which is underneath um, and that one is very sensitive to um, adjust and make tighter or looser so when the machine sews um, the needle of course, you put your fabric in here, right? And the needle sews through the fabric. Well, there's also a thread on the bottom, which is the bobbin thread. And the bobbin case is in here, which I'll show you in a minute. But what the bobbin um, thread on the bottom and the thread on the top do is that they interlock like, like this, right, at, uh, right in between the fabric. So that's why you see little dots on the top side and little dots on the bottom side and a stitch on the top and stitch on the bottom because they're interlocking like that. And that's how it sews it together. And so what goes under here, mine, um, let's see, I think it slides off. Okay, this one slides off. Some of them come off this way. Um, they 
they're all the same though. And a couple of reasons why that happens. So this is actually a little compartment here and it has, it's kind of a mess right now. <laughs> this one actually came with extra bobbins and places you could put bobbins, which is cool if you have different colors. Um, it comes with the screwdriver which this screwdriver is actually, it looks very large, doesn't it? It's to, to change um, the needle right here. So it fits right here and it's to change the needle when it's dull. It actually came with some needles, but you can obviously buy them at Joann's or any kind of place like that. And then they're pretty much universal. They're, these machines, the, the needles are flat on one side and rounded on the front side. Um, this is a seam ripper, of course, and there's different feet. This is the buttonhole foot, and you can tell because it has, let's see, it has different sizes, d little uh, lines there, and that's the different size of the buttonhole. Um, and then some things I probably don't even know what this is. Oh, this looks like um, a zipper foot so you would put that on there and the little weird little notch on each side is you put the needle all the way over and you can sew very close to the to the zipper teeth oh oh yeah that's the one I just took out and that's about it oh and here's another foot um this one looks like an overlocking foot actually I'm not sure and this one, because this is the one thing about secondhand machines, obviously a lot of the times they don't come with the manuals, but you can actually go online and find manuals. If you look, if you type in Kenmore 12 stitch, and it probably has a number on it somewhere on the machine and you can just print off a booklet a lot of the times. Um, and so on the machine, this is the foot. Um, the thing that you push your foot with underneath is actually called the pedal. <laughs> this is the foot. Um, and then I was going to show you the bobbin case. So you take this off and what this does too, is that if you're sewing like a hem of the paint of your pants or something, you can put it on like this way and then sew it around like that. That's one reason to take that off or like, um, the hem of a sleeve or something like that. And then I open up this case and right there's the bobbin case. So take that out and there's the bobbin doo -doo -doo. and that can come out when you need to wind it. Um, and so here it is and here's the case. And so there's a little notch here that the thread goes through and then you pull it and it comes out here. And so this little arm right there is actually for tension. So if it was too loose and you're getting all these like loose threads, um, you can also adjust this. This is rarely adjusted though. It usually comes factory adjusted and you really don't have to mess with it. But I've, I've come across some that I've had to adjust it and there's a screw right there and then you just tighten it and the little bit goes a long way with this bobbin, not like the machine um, up here where you can adjust this a lot before you can see that much of a difference. Um, of course, depending on your fabric, but right here, you just do it a teeny, teeny, tiny, and it will um, tighten this or loosen this arm. And so you put the bobbin in here, and I, so the arm, this little thing is up, and then the thread is going around on this side, so it looks like the number nine put it in there, push it in there, and then it goes through that little slot and then you pull it until it comes out. You hear the little click, it comes out right there. So it's in between this arm and the body of the case. And you can feel like the tension on there. And that's good. You want it to be able to hold itself like this and not just fall down really fast. Okay, and so it goes with this little piece sticking up and there's a little notch here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, see right there's that little notch. That's where that goes. And right there, till it clicks, 
See, you don't, you have to push it in until it clicks. If you don't, when you start sewing, this uh, little case can shoot out. Um, not if you have this closed, but I, I've seen it shoot across the room one time on an industrial sewing machine. And then, so this, uh, the thread is, it's threaded on the top. Let me turn that on. And then you pull this thread out. Uh, there it is. And then you hand crank it. Always crank the machine towards yourself and the thread will go around the bottom. Can you see it down there? And then boop, and then it loops around and grabs that bobbin um, thread. Oh, jeez, I can't get that thread. Here. Um, there we go. Boop. So you want both of these this one to come out of that little space in between. And the machine has this wheel on the side and that makes the machine go with when you're using the pedal underneath. But to hand crank it, you always turn it towards yourself. If you go the opposite way, that's not the way it's threaded. That's not the way it sews. So you could jam up your machine. So when hand cranking it, you just always go towards yourself like that. And then this one, some people have this little thing that you pull out or a little button that you push, but this one, let's see, you hold this and then you crank it until it disengages and engages. So that is actually to wind the bobbin up here. So you want to disengage it so this whole thing doesn't turn and you're not sewing with the needle over here while you're winding a bobbin. It will still wind the bobbin if it's not, if it's still engaged with the machine over here, but this will, um, you could break a needle and then the thread of course can get all jammed up underneath. So you want to um, disengage this so that you can wind a bobbin. I'm gonna unthread my machine and then I will show you um, how I thread the machine. Okay, so my machine actually has, a, it, it shows you how to do it. There's like these little arrows, which a lot of more modern machines have those. It shows you in which direction, let's see, it even has one there. <laughs> the, um, you go to, and look down here, it even has it like that. Um, so on the top, I put my thread here. And then it says to go this way. And I hook it on there. And so you go through the tension discs, which is right in between there. And then it says to go up this way and then um, to go around that little arm. Let's open it up. Not all of these you can open up, but see it can go around the arm. So now it's through that little hole and then it goes right back down. And some of them have this little hook here to keep it in the right place for the needle. Not all of them do though. Some of them even have um, this little like a bar right here. I mean, this one does, but that's not what that one's for, um, that you can put your thread behind so it doesn't get all loose and crazy up here. And then once you hook it here, you go through the needle and you always go from front to back with the needle. Boop. <laughs> so there's also needle threaders that you could use too, if you have one of those. And then the bobbin is right through that hole that's in between. You put them over to the side when you start sewing. So the next thing is the stitch length. So that's how many stitches are stitched along like that. Um, from one to four. Usually on machines, it's anywhere between the three and the four, uh, like three and a quarter or three and a half. This one is yeah, about three and a quarter, or three and three quarters, sorry. Um, and one way to learn what's the right number is to sew on a piece of sample fabric. You sew on a piece of scrap fabric to test your stitch length, and if your machine is doing well, 
And then you take a ruler and for one inch, there should be nine stitches per inch. Okay, I'm gonna do a little sample sewing here. And I'm using this blue fabric so that you can see my stitches. Yes, this is a t-shirt and it's a little stretchy, but I think it'll be okay. So I'm gonna do it here. Have the needle in the middle as opposed to over to the side, see? And that's just for um, if you're sewing um, like a zipper, so you're clo sewing close to the teeth. This is in the middle. I'm not gonna back stitch. I'm just gonna go forward and stitch it. Oh wait, I gotta turn it on first. Okay. And so you wanna crank it if it's kinda in the fabric at the end, you wanna turn that wheel towards yourself until it comes to like about there. Then you lift up the foot, which is the lever on mine is right here. They're usually, sometimes they're right behind, right here. Um, and then you pull the fabric. If it's kind of stuck, you just kind of jiggle that because sometimes the top thread is stuck underneath the bobbin. And you want to pull it out pretty far and cut it close to the fabric. And I actually have a built-in cutter right here and some people do on their machines. There you go. And then we're looking at the stitch and it looks really good. It's, it's not loose, it's not um, on either side. So this is with the top thread, this is the bobbin thread. And then if you look in between each of these, might not be able to see it. There's a teeny tiny dot, see it? That teeny tiny dot is actually the bobbin thread and the same on this side. Since this is the bobbin thread right here, that teeny teeny dot in between each stitch, you can barely see it, that's the top thread. So that's where they're interlocking and sewing this together. See, that's where they're interlocking right there. Okay, I have a ruler. Um, this is a six inch clear ruler. You can get these at the fabric store, but then you can also get them at art supply stores. Um, I love these rulers because you can see through it and they're great for measuring your seam allowance and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count the stitches for an inch. Let's start at that one and see how many I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches. So I could make this a little bit smaller so it's nine stitches per inch, but looking at the stitch right now, I like I like how long they are. They can be between eight and nine stitches per inch. I wouldn't go 10, that's gonna be too small. And what happens when they're smaller stitches, they could perforate the fabric and they can start tearing <laughs> or they would be very hard to get out as well um the smaller stitches like if you have um like 15 stitches per inch or actually it's even smaller than that i'll show you up here um the smaller stitches are for that that says that is a picture of the buttonhole so you want to be all the way over to there, Oop. that on that window, and that's the buttonhole. Um, you can also do these small stitches. What they're good for is like sewing on appliques. You know, you can zigzag really small around an applique or a picture of something, um, and you just adjust it accordingly to how big your stitch is going to be. But the normal stitch is going to be right here, three and three quarters on my machine. It's pretty much the same for each machine um, with a little bit of wiggle room. For the bigger stitch, like a four, that's a basting stitch or a gathering stitch. If you're gonna gather a piece of fabric, you want these long stitches. So when you pull it, it'll gather up your fabric. Um, that's what the four is for. Or a basting stitch, which means you base it together first. You sew it with these big stitches, like a collar or something that you're not sure if you can, if it's gonna fit you right, and then you try it on, 
and then if you need to adjust it, it's easier to pull out those longer stitches than it is for a regular stitch. It doesn't take as long, and then you can adjust it. I wanna show you too, um, when you go and buy bobbins, there's different size bobbins actually. Um, this machine had both uh, the metal and the plastic in here. I haven't tried the metal one in the machine yet, but when I put them up together and I see they're about the same around, and then this way too, um, see the metal one is bigger. So I'm not sure if it's gonna fit in the case. We can try that out actually, because right now it has a plastic, so a plastic bobbin in it. If you find bobbins at the store, you wanna, wanna make sure that they do fit in your case. And this does actually, see? You don't want it to stick out far here, obviously. Um, it won't work. And then you don't want it to be too loose in here either. It won't work. And obviously if it was too tight, it wouldn't even go in there, but it looks like it fits in there. Okay. They're just different sizes. And then this one, it fits in there. See, there's not really any space around there and it's flat there. The FAF machines do have uh, bigger bobbins actually there. And the bobbin case itself is bigger. Um, you can also have a machine that doesn't have a bobbin case at all. And it's built in to this right here and then you just sit it in there and the same mechanics is the same thing it it'll have a little slot to put the thread in and then it'll have a tension area too that might just look like a little metal piece pushing against another metal piece um yeah the mechanics won't the way that it works won't be different it might just look different you might have a drop-in bobbin oops that goes this way instead of this way. Okay, the basics on how to wind a bobbin. So most machines will have some kind of tension, like this is another tension disc, you lift it up. It, it's pushing against this other metal piece. Um, the, the thread needs to go around the tension disc and then um, around the bobbin here and then that gets clicked over. And then I still have to disengage the wheel for that to work. So, I put this thread around that little tension right there. And you wanna go like this around it. Oops, let's see if I can do it one-handed. Oh gosh, I can't. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this. Gotta floss it through there like that. And then it's going to go around the back side and then it crisscrosses there and it's going to go around the bobbin over here. You don't want it to go the other way like, um, sorry, this is hard to do one handed, like in front of it, like, I mean, sorry, behind it like that. Ah, let's try this it up there um, behind it like this yeah. Yeah. and around that way see because it's not crossing itself and what can happen you can start winding the bobbin and you're going really fast and this thread is really pulling and it's just gonna uh, fly out of the tension disc like that so you want to cross it over so it crosses over itself and it'll stay in the tension disc better I'll thread it okay I'll so I put it through the dent through the tension disc like that. And this one actually has holes in it. So I'm going to thread the thread from the inside out through one of those holes. There's a reason for that. Boop. So now it's, it's on the inside like, oops, sorry. Like that. And it's going out the hole. So I'm gonna put it on there like that. And I'm still gonna hold on to this thread because once it starts winding, it's gonna make it taut. Here, first I need to disengage that so my needle won't move. And then I push on the pedal while holding this thread up. Sorry, I need to click that over. Oops, click that over. There, and it broke off the thread, which is fine. So now it's wound, winding on there. 
and that's what you want it to do is to go up and down and up and down and up and down because if it's going to just wind on one side it's going to get loose and it's going to fall over and it won't work it needs to be taut that's why you put it through the tension disc um, there's different kinds of tension sometimes it's like a bar that you put it through it just matters that it's two metal pieces pressing together so here it goes and it's going up and down and if it's not you can guide it with your finger, press it up and down like that. You can wind it until it clicks off, or you can just fill it pretty full and then stop. So that's about good for me. I'm just gonna stop. Oops, see, it even came off of there again. Um, I was going too fast. So I'm gonna stop right there, because if it gets too full, Oops, see, that's what happens. Um, then it won't move inside the bobbin case and it'll just get stuck. Okay, so that's the basics of a sewing machine. I like to tell people how your machine works and I feel like then you can troubleshoot it easier. Like if you have big loops of thread on the top side um, that could mean that your bobbin is loose or it's not threaded right, or it might e not even be in the tension disc. That's the first thing I check out. Um, if it's loose on the underside, then the top thread could be not, um, threaded right into the machine, not through the tension disc or not through the arm. You have to just take it apart. I mean, take out the thread and re-thread it. That's always your first thing to do with troubleshooting and then mess with the tension. The next thing that I do is change the needle. If you have a dull needle and it's not sharp enough, sorry, <laughs> my baby, um, it will actually skip stitches or make stitches really loose. Um, change the needle. It's hard to tell if you touch the needle, if it's dull or if it's sharp enough. The best bet, stop, girl. It's just throwing all my sewing box, emptying my sewing box. Um, change the needle. Before you go and get it fixed or looked at, those are your troubleshooting um, steps at first. Say hi. Hi. I'm Cuckoo. Look at, mwah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, you can leave me comments and questions if you have any. This machine's pretty much like any machine. Some of the, you know, the placements of like the stitch length and the stitch width and all that kind of stuff could be someplace else. So you could take a picture of your machine and send it to me if you have a question. I would be more than happy to help you. Thank you for watching. Say bye. 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 Bye